Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I wanted to introduce, if I haven't already done so, the T-card or the tourniquet card. Alright, it's something that I make uh, specifically designed, started for first responders, a way to actually hold their tourniquet on their duty belt. Alright, I have a duty belt right here. And the way I designed it is very simple. It's, uh, you can make these yourself if you want. I sell them on the website. Three River Kydex, not Three River Blades. Three River Kydex. Uh, look for um, tourniquet card or T card. They'll be up there. I sell them for about forty bucks. All right. They come in different colors. If you're interested, uh, I have forest green. I have pink. I have uh, tan. If you want more tactical colors, I could also make them in camouflage. Black is probably the norm. Uh, EMT red. All right. I also make them in orange. Whatever color you want, I could probably get it. As long as Kydex makes it the uh, color, I'll buy a sheet and I'll make a bunch of them. All right. The idea behind this was very simple. I just wanted a better way to carry my tourniquet. And I think that I've kind of nailed it. There are pouches and there are a lot of other manufacturers doing this type of work. I'm just one of them. That's all it is. Okay. Very simple piece of kydex on the back some type of belt clip to affix it to your belt or the way that you're going to carry it you can also put it on your plate carrier because I have the uh, molly straps uh, and some shock cord All right, just regular shock cord it's very simple to make again I prefer if you want you could you can either watch this video because I'm going to make a couple for the uh, customers or you could just go to the website and buy them for 40 bucks All right, it's that simple so I just want to show you a little bit of how it works and how it goes on. Typically, this is going to be the clip for your duty belt. If you are someone that wears a duty belt, all right, this is your typical duty belt, okay? It just has all your kit on it, whether you're a police officer, federal agent, or security guard, you will have some type of duty belt. Now, on these clips, there's two types of clips that I have. One is the, I guess this is the, the push button lock. All right, it has a little push mechanism that opens, and this one's locked. It has an off-on switch, as you can see right there. All right, so off, you could push it down. On, once you put it on, it locks in place, okay? These Kodora belts are about two inches. If you get the, the traditional leather belt, it's almost three inches. So for that, you're gonna need a larger belt um, attachment. That's gonna be, that's going to be this. You're going to need the, let's see if we can see it, the Blade Tech. All right, the Blade Tech is a little bit more dur uh, durable, a little bit more sturdy, but it's not as easy to get it off and on. So, you know, pluses and minuses on which one you want. If you specifically want the Tech Lock from Blade Tech, that's fine. But again, I also have the Push Locks, okay, depending on which one you want. So the way this would work, is this is your typical duty belt and also I should say that there are they will come with adjustments so if you want you could pull the adjustment bars out some of them have one some of them have two so if you wanted to wear this on like let's say a 1.5 war belt or whatever the case is you can take this and it adjusts around your belt all right so this is a typical two inch duty belt I'll just put it on this way you fix all you do is you clasp it in Clasp it in, put the lock on, and now you're good to go. All right, it's that simple. Now, these tourniquet holders or tea cards will hold uh, soft T, soft T wides, and the cat tourniquets. You will have to figure a way to make these even because on the sides, especially when you fold them up, and even with the pouches, they didn't always fit right. So you have to kind of fold them in a way that would make sense to make it as, as flat as possible. You don't want all the bulk down here at the bottom and then all the way at the top have nothing and then it's kind of squished. It will hold on. These shock cords are pretty thick. They're, I think, um, 530 seconds and this shock cord is good to go. So if I needed to deploy this, it's very simple. What I would do is just take the bottom ring out, take the top ring out, and then just pull. It's that simple, okay? It's that simple, that's how fast it comes on and comes off, all right? If you wanted to reassess it or put it back in, of course, you're gonna have to refold it. I recommend taking it off the belt because it makes it that much easier. And then what you would do is, again, have to weave it in one at a time, okay? So it's that kind of, so I'm not gonna do it now because it's just gonna take too long. 
All right, so those are up on, this, on the website, Three River Kydex, if you're interested. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to build one. All right, actually, I'm going to build two because I have customers that want them. I think it's a great gift for anybody. Now, I will say that I don't sell the tourniquets, so if you want tourniquets, go. I'll put a link down below where you can buy them. I typically buy them off Amazon. Soft T wide and cat tourniquets will work. Okay, it clips onto the wingless, and then you just one, two, three, and you saw how fast I got it out. Okay, different colors that are available. Uh, today we are going to build this one. This happens to be the universal belt clip. Uh, the customer wants one that's horizontal and one that's vertical. Also, when you are ordering, make sure you click on one of those because I need to know. Something like this is going to fit a 1.5 or 1.7 regular belt. It will not fit on a duty belt. Okay, you need the tech lock for the duty belt. You need it. Okay, because it's just it's just not going to fit. It's too big. All right. Um, what you're going to need is Kydex. The guy wants OD Green, which uh, happens to be one of my fan favorites. So I have OD Green Kydex. You're going to need some type. You don't need a heat gun for this. This is uh, five. What did I say? Five thirty seconds. Five thirty second seconds drill bit and a quarter inch drill bit. Shot cord. Five thirty seconds. Probably about fifteen inches. Okay. Shot cord. Your belt attachment and your jig, whatever your jig is. Now this jig I made, okay? There's going to be a lot of eye fitment here, I would say. Uh, this jig is specifically designed for the tech lock, build your own jigs, that kind of thing. But these holes are specific. You don't want to have the hole too close to the edge and you don't want to have it too far in because when you put the tech lock on there, if you put it too close, what will happen is um, you'll start covering the holes. That's no good. Okay, and if it's too far to the edge, it won't hold. Okay, so it's that kind of thing. So this jig I made myself. Make your own jigs. Do what you have to do. Um, so let me clean up a little bit here, and then we'll start rolling. All right, so one of the simplest things here, like I said, is to get yourself a jig. Create one first before you start going this way. All your pieces will look exactly the same or as close to as possible. Now I'm dealing with uh, was it uh, 0 0.880 Kydex. All right, it's the typical stuff that I use to make my knife sheets. That's why this is very easy to do for me because it's not uh, something that I'm not unfamiliar with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up one corner. Just use my pencil. All right, put the line in there, and then I'll use this side as well. Try to get as flat as possible straight as possible. There's going to be a little bit of hand sanding on these so I'm not too worried about the corners. They will be a little rough cut. Okay, And then I just get my straight or should I say my square. And then what I'm going to do here, uh, if I can find my razor knife, there it is. And then just cut it off. Okay, I'm going to leave a little bit of the line. I don't want to take too much of the line. So I want to make sure there's enough space for everything. Okay. Like I said, it's, it's easier to, to uh, take it off than to put it back. Here, so again, we'll just cut those pieces off. We'll leave a little bit of the line on there. So that's one piece, and then we'll leave up again a little bit of the line on this side as well. So working with Kydex is pretty simple guys, it's not, it's not rocket science, it's pretty easy. Uh, it's just time, that's what, that's what you really pay for. Right? So they're not exactly identical, but they fit on top of each other, no other spaces, that kind of thing. And then I'll just take my piece of OD, get rid of that so I can use it for something else. And then now here's the 
the jig. All right, this jig right here I created specifically not for the tech locks. These are the tech locks. This jig is just for the universal loops. And the way I designed it is very simple. So you see you have four holes. So you can use it this way in this, this configuration. Actually, let me give you a little more light. Oh, maybe that's not going to work. There you go. How's that, guys? A little bit more light. So, the way I used it is very simple. So you can use it in this configuration, the two holes here. You have one adjustment if you wanted to bring it a little lower. You could flip it around and bring it a little lower or move it up. Or if you wanted it in a horizontal position, you can use it in that configuration. Which is what one of the uh, orders of four, horizontal. Okay. So I don't really get into cutting this off. I don't think you should, but if you need to adjust it because some of the holes are covered, then that's what we're going to have to do. We might have to adjust some of the excess that's here on the actual clip itself. No big deal. I have a grinder. We'll get rid of that. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Kydex, put the jig on top, mark out all my holes. The biggest thing here is trying to make it as tight as possible without moving it. Because once you move it and the holes get moved, then everything kind of gets screwed up. All right. So I just put a little pressure on it, little marks, little pencil lead marks. So what I like to do is just so the, the uh, the drill bit doesn't wobble as I just try to find the center and I put a little hole in there. A little punch, a little punch. It'll help the drill bit not wobble. Okay, make sure it's centered. Also take that off now because now I can see the center of my holes. see when you move that, that thing away sometimes the holes aren't exactly lined up so you gotta readjust them that's fine okay. so what I'll do is I'm gonna drill out the uh, quarter inch first and then I'll uh, change the bit alright so for this bit is actually a kydex bit it actually has a little tiny drill in there a um, a little chisel drill so it's actually kind of cool it fits right in the holes that I need it to Shabby. I'm gonna change the bits. All right. So this is where, if you had multiples, you would do all your hole drilling at one shot. It makes sense, right? Instead of doing like one, then make one. All right. You're at the drill press already. Mark all your holes. Drill, drill, drill. Then change your bits and carry on that way. So all I'm really doing now is. Cleaning up all the holes, cleaning up all the edges. Now, ideally, you don't want any sharp edges that may dig into your stomach, abdomen, wherever you're going to place the tourniquet holder. Okay, so if it's close, tight to you like that, you don't want this sharp edge to dig you in the gut. You know, all day, every single day, especially if you were going to use something, you know, that's a little bit tighter to your body than tech lock. So I'm just cleaning up the holes here, and then right here I have 150 grit sandpaper, and I have 220, okay? I'm not going any further than that. Um, I tried to do this stuff on the grinding machine, and what happens is you wind up taking off too much. So ideally you just want a little bit, let's see, let's 
this is one this is 15. You just want a little bit to take off the edges. You want to take off that white break mark. Okay. So what I do is kind of clean up the edges real quick. 150 grit. Make sure I get all the rough marks off. I don't want any more of that white edge. You can see that white edge right there. Alright, that's from bending and cutting. That's actually not part of the Kydex. That's because you stretch the Kydex and you bend and cut it. So I want to get all that off. 150 grit seems to do a really quick job of it. Alright, so once I get kind of the rough stuff off, this is 220. I'm just trying to bevel the edges a little bit, trying to get those hard corners off there. I'm not trying to change the actual TQ card itself. I'm just trying to get those sharp edges off, okay? So I'll just kind of roll with it a little bit, fold the paper, get those rough edges off, actually try to rub the sides a little bit so it's not so uh, sharp. I don't want any sharp edges next to my life-saving equipment. I don't want any sharp edges close to my body. So you'll see that I'll take some of the edge off of it. And a lot of this is hand polishing, hand sanding, and it might seem a little bit kind of silly when you have all the machines. But the problem with the machines is that it takes too much off too fast. Uh, you can slow it down, and, if, and believe me, if I was making 30 of these, I might use the machines and, and be a little bit more careful. But to make two, it's really no big deal, and honestly, I just wanted to show you what the work goes into making these things. So I don't think $40 is too much to pay for a tourniquet card that was handmade. I mean, that's, that's my opinion, but that's kind of the way I look at it. Right. Gets the job done, and it looks tactical. And if it's not looking cool, then what's the point? Mostly being cool is what it's all about. scratches out. Alright, so I spared you the arborous, <laughs> arduous <laughs> cleaning of these hand by hand, alright? It's a lot of work. And all I'm doing is, like I said, I just wanted to clear up the edge and just make them round so it doesn't poke you, okay? So now what I'm going to do is just give it a little bit of buff. This is an old buffer. I try not to go too hard on it. All I want to do is just clean up the edges, give it a nice little shiny uh, cleaning, and then that'll be it. I gotta plug it in first. That usually helps. So that's kind of what you want. I don't know if you can see the light is kind of glinting off the edge, that edge profile. That's what you want. You want that nice smooth buffing uh, edge right there and you want all the sides to be nice and shiny. Okay. Now we'll put the hardware on. Alright guys, when it comes to hardware, you're going to need your shock cord, you're going to need your mounting hardware, whatever it is. This happens to be the universal one. Uh, some type of lighter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this up 
All right. I always like to put the the hardware on first. This way, when you put the shock cord on, it doesn't if it it's not going to interfere with you trying to put the um, uh, the bolts in here or the, or the Chicago screws. All right. You don't have to worry about that. So what I do is I just find where I kind of want to put this. This is going to be the vertical one, and I tend to use the. Let's see if I can clean that up now that I made it all dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so I tend to use the Chicago screws with no backing or no screw holes. You can use whichever whichever hardware you want. This happens to be, I think, gunmetal. So this is a gunmetal blue. And rough texture with rough texture. I like to keep the inside of this smooth. So as the inside kydex is smooth, so are the bolts and the reason are the Chicago screws. And the reason that I do that is because I want the um, tourniquet to slide out as easily as possible. So if it's on the softer side or the smoother side, it'll slip right out as opposed to the other side. Okay, not a big deal, but it, you know I like just to be a little bit more uniform. And then I just put my my little rubber gaskets in there, tighten this up a little bit. So. Try to make sure that the holes aren't being covered in any way. And just FYI guys, some people don't put the rubber gaskets in there. I do because I, I want it to give a little bit more flexibility. Uh, you don't have to use them on this application in particular, but what also happens is uh, the rubber gaskets actually help it from the screws loosening up as well. So it gives a little bit of tightness, a little bit of tension. And if you're wearing this on your belt all day, at least you have a little bit of flex. It's not plastic on plastic. The rubber washers for the Chicago screws work really well. All right, so that's probably about as tight as I'm going to get it. And as you can see, it has the other two holes if I wanted to adjust it. So it has one adjustment up, or you can flip this around if you want, or you can go vertical if you want. I'm sorry, horizontal. So. What I'll do with my shock cord is I just burn the ends, one on each side, make sure that it's not sticking out because it's got it's to go through the holes, and then I tie the knot in one end. All right. So how you feed this through is specific because you want at least four bars of shock cord. That's what's going to hold in your tourniquet. So I feed it through like this. You start at the top. There's one bar, okay, there's one bar, then I have to go down, all right, and don't worry about tightening it, you can adjust it as well, go across, that's two bars, go down again, and across, three bars, and then the last one is going to be a little bit tight, but that's what you want. And that's four bars. Okay, so you got four bars of shock cord. And then what I do is I just try to, as nimbly as you can, you can use a little extra. I use 15 inches of shock cord. You can use 20 if you want, and then cut off the excess. I try not to waste anything if I don't have to. You can buy shock cord on Amazon, it's not a big deal. This is the 530 seconds, I believe. All right, so, and then I just adjust it as necessary. So I just pull these out, adjust it a little bit. All right, so, and then I'll get my tourniquet. This is my tourniquet. The person that's buying it will have to buy their own tourniquet. I don't sell that. And then to feed it through, it's just simple. Once you get everything kind of sorted out where you want it, you're just going to have to finagle it a little bit. Okay, bring it around the sides, you know, depending on what tourniquet you have, you'll have to adjust it, all right? It will fit the soft tee wide, like I said, and it will fit any cat tourniquet, okay? Okay, just like that, and then you adjust it as necessary. All right, just like that. You adjust it. 
Alright, so now she's ready to go. You just slip it on your belt and you're good to go. Alright guys, so if you like this video and you like other videos, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys really appreciate this. Um, please go to Three River Kydex to purchase one of these if you like, or multiple. If I do have bulk orders, so if you're uh, someone that has a department or a unit and you want unit tourniquet cards or T cards, I could do that for you. Colors are available. Any color Kydex that I can get, I will. Uh, if you wanted some type of patterning Kydex, uh, I have those, but they're a special order. So if you want like Cryptek and stuff like that, I could also get that. Uh, please like, su subscribe, like I said, uh, Three River Blades, Three River Kydex, and always guys, please stay safe. Thank you.